Okay, Josh, this is Fernando. He's a six month old Havapu, which is half Havanese and half mini poodle. They've had him since he was a young puppy. And although he's a very nice dog, they're struggling with quite a bit. Um, mouthing and play biting, nipping at their heels when they walk around the house, um, trying to bite the brush when grooming him, which can be frustrating. Um, scratching on their hardwood floors and couch before laying down. Um, coming when called is a game and it's actually very frustrating because he turns it, they'll try to reach down and get him and he'll back up and then run around the yard again. So he has no recall. He steals things and then plays keep away, um, particularly things from the coffee table, napkins and paper. He'll actually go into the bathroom and take the toilet paper roll by the mouth and then drag it all around the house. Um, he gets into the trash in the bathroom and then like scatters it everywhere, um, dashing out the door, which is very dangerous. Um, he barks definitely outside and then he started attention barking at them inside. And he chases their cat, which the cat really does not appreciate. They've tried prior training, and they were, uh, I'm putting this kindly, not happy with it. Mm -hmm. And they got a referral from somebody who sent multiple dogs to us in the past. Okay. So um, they're very excited for this. Yeah. So he's been trained a little bit, correct? Well, the guy called it a scam. A scam. So <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and... When I did get him to sit, the owners never got him to sit at the drop off. When I did get him to sit, it was literally for a half a second. <laughs> yeah, in my little interaction with him there, I, I read some, uh, there were some red flags there. And I'm sure you- was constant lunging, constant jumping. He didn't bark. He, he didn't bark until he got into my car. And then he was like, wait a minute. Gotcha. Um, but it was just constant like movement. You could not get him to hold still. That, that uh, description sounds just like all the descriptions, you know, nice dog, but causing a lot of stress because essentially the dog doesn't listen. Good. Had training. Um, one of the owners referred to it as a scam, which is pretty funny. And I'm imagining it was probably trick-based tr obedience training, right? As, what I mean by that is like you're teaching them with a reward. So you play a game with them for them to learn the skills. And, and every time they're, they're listening, you're giving them a reward, probably food, I'd imagine. Um, <clears throat> so, and then that didn't work. Surprise, surprise. We're gonna introduce the thing that's missing in this guy's life. No, 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 no. Oh my God. So now uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna introduce some, the missing link in this guy's uh, prior training and probably in his life in general, which is, you guessed it, correction. That's what this guy needs, right? And that's, so we got the laundry list of complaints. I don't even know what they all are, right? But you, you listed some. The laundry list of the complaints. It's really, you could just throw that out because it's really just, he doesn't listen, right? That's it. Because if you listen, then you could tell him to do something, he'd do it. You can tell him to stop and he'd stop and then the laundry list goes away. So that's all, those are all symptoms of what we like to call the core issue, which is we don't have a follower leader dynamic where we're the leader, the dog's the follower, therefore the dog listens. So. The problem is he doesn't listen. AKA brat, AKA entitled, AKA spoiled, right? AKA <laughs> no tough love. Tough love has punishment. That's the difference between this mushy love and, and like tough love is tough love is you're gonna give a consequence, you're gonna give a correction, a, a form of punishment for non-compliance and for unwanted behaviors. That's missing in this guy's life, I can tell already. I can, you can tell within a, a second of interacting with these dogs. They, they're just entitled, period. That's really it. And that comes with a lot of symptoms. That comes with all the, the laundry list that it came with. And, and it's, we take that laundry list and we put it up against any other dog that was here, it's like the same stuff. And all those other dogs that lack punishment in the raising process as well, right? Okay, proper punishment too, something that it's effective, something that works, something that, that is easily, uh, you can use it very easily, it's not a complicated thing, and, and it's effective, and it's a way of telling the dog, I don't like when you do that, or it's a way of telling the dog, if you don't listen, this happens. Um, without that, this is what happens, okay? And actually, they become bitey too. A lot of these entitled dogs become little biters, 
too. And I can imagine he's on his way to doing that. If he ever had to really disagree, if he ever really wanted to disagree, he's already nipping at you and stuff. He's, his, his brain, his dog brain is probably going to say, bite. Like, as in, I'm not, not in a malicious, I want to kill you way, but in a, I'm disagreeing with you human way. I'm correcting the human. And as soon as he finds out that works, let's say like the brushing, they say I don't like to be brushed. As soon as he realizes once I nip at you, it stops. Now he's like, I got something in my arsenal I can use when I want to disagree with my human, when I want to correct my human, when I want to punish my human. And another interesting thing about these dogs is they're already using punishment on their humans. Whether it's a bark, 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 bark to get what I want, or whine, 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 whine to get what I want, they're using punishment, it's working, okay? So now we're gonna flip the script and start using it on him, and then we're gonna see the best version of himself, right? So he peed in our house. I, I'm not sure if he's peeing in the house at home. If not, it could be because he smelt the other dogs, and so he marked, right? He didn't lift a leg, but he intentionally just... He doesn't know how to lift a leg. Exactly. He's not in a dog pack. He hasn't picked up that yet. So, um, and he's young. Okay, another interesting point here. Let's see if we got it. A lot of the times... Good boy. You see this? Yeah, good boy. Slip lead's much different. Um, would they have them on before? Harness. Okay. That's another, again, take that and put it up against the other dog. It's, everybody's doing the same stuff. Everybody's got them on harnesses. Everybody's going and doing the, the trick training. Um, every, so you're not alone. This is this, and I know it's very stressful to live with a dog that you love and that is nice, but it's causing all the stress. Um, most everybody that comes in, they're on a harness. They're going through trick training. You know, everything's trying to be like pleasant, comfortable, but the reality is, is we need to add in corrections, okay? So he resists the leash, but as you can see with the slip lead, it has a different effect. He started to resist, but then he was like, okay, I'll come with it. Because if, you, if it gets tight with this, it gets uncomfortable, right? If it gets tight in the harness, big deal. And by the way, the dog's the strongest at their chest. So if you want your dog to pull, put a harness on them, they'll pull better. They'll be able to pull you more efficiently if you have a harness on. Because that's what harnesses are for. What do we put on sled dogs? Not slip leads, harnesses. So that they can pull that sled. They can use all their muscle to pull them. So that, that harness is saying, this is the tool to make it most effective for pulling you. And then if a dog can do this and move you, the dog's walking you, which means they're leading. Okay, this matters. Stuff matters, okay? All right, and also a small dog, okay? Small dog. He's not going to get much bigger. Treat a small dog like a big dog. Mentally, you have to treat him. And a reason why small dogs get a bad rap is because they're treated differently than big dogs, right? So if he was 300 pounds, a lot of his little cute stuff wouldn't be as tolerated. We have to tr treat him. If he's 3 pounds, 300 pounds, we treat them the same because the mind is still a dog, okay? Small dogs tend to get treated a, a little bit more spoiled, a little bit more uh, wiggle room for what they can do wrong. If we do that, we're gonna have more of a brat. So treat him like he's any other dog. I know he's small, and I know that makes things cuter, but if we treat him, uh, if we don't treat him like a dog because he's small, then we're gonna get more of a brat. So a lot of the stuff is relationship issues, for sure, Hier hierarchy, right? He doesn't have, he doesn't have a, a leader, a proper leader at least consistently. All right, let's see. See right there? Mm -hmm. So that right there, we're in a disagreement. They're smarter than you think. He understands that this means I'm telling you to come this way. He says, I don't want to, because if I do that, that means you're in control. You see that? Look. That's resistance to leadership or, or authority. That's all that is. He's not, to say he doesn't understand that, good boy, because he got uncomfortable. To say he doesn't understand it is to assume that he's dumb. He's not. He understands that. He understands that so well that he's willing to put up the fight because he understands that if you're able to do this and control his movement, that means you're leading. And they don't give that up for free. They make you earn that, right? So most every dog, especially with an attitude problem, if you say, let's go this way, they're gonna go. Not because they don't wanna go that way, just because you asked. And if you ask, and I listen, that means 
they're giving you the leadership position, they're allowing you to lead, right? It's not gonna happen. You have to earn that. So there's another example right there when you see just that little bit of that, that resistance, the attitude there, that's the core issue. That is the laundry list of problems, all right there in that moment, right? So that means if we tackle that moment, we're, 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 we're actually tackling the whole laundry list, okay? But I'm gonna set that down for now, and we're just gonna work on the recall, okay? Because the recall is really important to have for a safety reason. It's also gonna help with the training, but it's also that leadership exercise, right? If you can say, come here, and they, and they come to you and they stay, that's huge. And you were complaining this morning, okay. All right. I'm gonna start on a low number here. <clears throat> Fernando, right? Just make sure I get that right. Fernando, come. Good, good, good. Oh. Good. But he knew what come meant all along. Yes. They're, they're not. <laughs> dogs are so smart that they can make you think that they're dumb. Let me tell you something, because it benefits them. Well, here's, a little, here's a little example. We had a dog come in, same age, years ago. Diagnosed as deaf. Dog was not deaf at all. Not, not at all, you could go, and she'd hear that, right? Diagnosed by a professional as deaf. That's how good they are at acting like they don't understand or acting like they don't hear you at all, okay? So this guy is extremely smart. I can already tell. Just a couple interactions I had, he's very smart. So they know how to ignore what you're saying is so good that you're like, does he not understand? Or is he deaf? Now this dog was diagnosed as deaf, came to training. We realized, we trained her up like she was deaf, but within you know some time with her, I was like, this dog's not deaf at all. And I did some experimenting and I was like, oh, she's not deaf at all. She's literally not deaf at all. So good, good boy. Very nice. Nice job. And not dumb. He understands, right? Most of them do. That's the beauty of dogs. These little things that we're asking, it's not complex what we're asking them to do. Come here, right? <laughs> Go away, right? Stay right there. They kind of naturally pick up on this stuff, right? There's a little learning curve, but it's not much. You do a little bit of work and they've already, you know, this dog's had a little bit of that training already, even though it was done in a way that isn't effective when you need to use it in real life. The lessons were still there. They were still saying sit, which is a form of stay. They were probably still saying come, right? Um, and by the way, that's the foundation. Recall, which is come to me and stay. That's the foundation, right? If you have a recall and a stay, you're doing you're, you're, you're halfway there or more. Again, but it's not just about the, under, the training of the commands, meaning the dog knows the commands. It's also about relationship and attitude and compliance. And the relationship dynamic being your leader, dog's follower, and your job is to maintain that hierarchy like a pack, okay? So um, when you see the dog disrespecting your leadership, you have to correct that. That keeps them in line. We all know that deep down. We all know that, right? That's the missing ingredient for this fella right here, okay? Now he can be very, very, very enjoyable once this process is done and he has the right leadership. It can be very enjoyable, but that doesn't mean, um, you know, that we're done and we never have to correct again. No, that's the thing is you maintain that hierarchy. You maintain that respect by correcting when the dog's being disrespectful. Right, and, and you have to be able to see when the dog's being disrespectful. But the cool thing about humans, about us, is that we have something called emotions. And we can feel, you know, you can feel like if your emotion's kicking in, you're like, I'm a little annoyed by this little shit right now. Because he's not, that's your, that's your signal. There needs to be a correction, right? If you're really in tune, you can really, you'll feel these little things, right? You'll, you should know when to correct without having to read 10 books and spend, you know, your emotions, they kick in. And they already have with this guy, I can tell, at least with, especially with, with one of the owners that, you know, the way that they were talking, like, oh, they're feeling, they know that they need to be correcting, right? Now they'll have a way to, and everything will be much, 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 much better. 
good. Good. Who's your boy? That's a good boy, Fernando. Good. All right. Break the boy. That's a that's a good boy. <laughs> I'm not sure if he had a release. That's the thing that I noticed with these dogs is there's really no release. Um, that, that's what happens yeah, when you, there is a release. The, they release themselves. Right. Or it's when the, the food's gone, right? It's like, or when I lose interest in the reward, the, the rep's over. Um, this style of training is when you ask the dog to do something, they continue to do it until you release them or give them something else to do. If they release themselves prematurely, they get corrected, right? So I could see when I release him, he's like, what does that mean? Oh, that means I can move. I can, you know, right. It's much different than sitting here with a treat and he's doing it. I'm keeping him there because he's, I'm a Pez dispenser, right? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, that reference is probably a little old, <laughs> but a Pez dispenser is like, it's one of those little dispensers where you, you, you lift open the head and it opens up and you get food. So we were just literally like treat, treat, treat. And as soon as the treats go away, it's over, right? And also, I think everyone can agree, it doesn't make much sense that we're like, the dog's not behaving. Let's go buy it a bunch of stuff that it wants. Let's buy it, you know, I use the kid analogy. Let's go get some video games and candy and all this stuff to then try to entice the kid to listen. It kind of goes against your, uh, it's kind of counterintuitive. It, you know, it doesn't feel, it feels unnatural, right? To be like, they're causing a lot of stress. Let's go play games. Let's go to the carnival. Doesn't work. And we all know why it doesn't work, okay? And we all know what they need. Good. I hope, I hope we all know what they need. <laughs> I hope, hope we're not that far gone. Good. Okay, so now he's, now he's staying with me. We're going to try to get another opportunity here to get another. I'll try ditching him. Try going into another room, open up a door. Here we go. Come. Yeah. Right here, biggie. Big guy. I don't like that wrap around. Right here. Come here, bud. Come here. That's it right there. Good. That was it. That was it, smart fella. That was it. Good. <clears throat> so after the beep, pressure is on. And it, it's on the whole time, so it's held. Right? So that, that, well, that means there's stimulation. So. I, he hears the beep, he feels the stimulation. It's on until he gets right in position, then it turns off. And then I say, good boy. So that's how he knows when he's in the right position. Not only from me saying good boy, but also then that pressure just turns off. So it's like beep, it turns on, he gets to the right position, it turns off. If he leaves again, beep, pressure on, he comes back, it turns off. Now that's how we're training it. It's not how you're gonna have to use it going home. Going home, it's much easier. You just beep, and if he doesn't listen, you just tap with a correction and then you beep again, right? It's, it's very simple. But you can see in the teaching this way, it's very obvious where to be because the sensation turns off when you're in the right position. Good boy. We've already got relevance to that beep noise. You see, you hear that beep, he feels that stem, he's boom. He's trying to solve that problem. Good boy. I am using rewards too. So I, I, yes, I'm using uh, correction slash punishment, but I'm also using a reward right? Good boy. Petting. Good. Good boy. So now we have contrast. We have the reward, the punishment. You put them together. That's natural. That works. We try to use one without the other. It feels a little lopsided. We're using only rewards. Eh, not really working. Has some side effects. Only punishment. No rewards, meaning good boy, nice. Eh, some side effects to that too. Use both. Boom. Now you're, now, you're, now you're in a good spot if you have both. Good, and that's referred to as balanced dog training. That's kind of how you raise a dog. It's kind of how you raise a, a kid or, or, or anything or teach anybody. You have to be able to correct with punishment and reward with rewards in order to have that balance, all right? Good. 
but I'm not mucking it up with food. You see, I'm not bringing that, I'm not saying, are you hungry? We're not doing that, we're not doing that right now. And we will introduce food here shortly, but in a different way. We're gonna use the food to create hierarchy. Good. Good. He needs to learn to stay. And I can tell that that's gonna be a problem for him. Not the not a little firmness there in his butt, resisting that, but not too bad. Good boy. Stay. Good. Stay right there. I'm going to continue this here in a second with a different exercise. I just want to see how bad it is. It's bad. It's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> he understands what I'm saying, mm -hmm. uh, especially because I'm using the, the dog whispering stuff. He totally understands what I'm saying, but, but he's disagreeing with it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it even more obvious here with an exercise to teach this day. He thinks he can just come into my personal space whenever he wants. Break. Wow. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. All right. Let's get a bowl. Here we are. Okay. okay get this here. He's going into one of those rooms. I'm going to recall. Good boy, good boy. First thing he did is he ran into that room and he jumped up on the window, if that tells you anything. All right, good. I'm imagining he sees home, his house as his house, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, ideally the dog sees it as your house and you're allowing them in, right? It, it, there are a lot of problems come when the dog sees it as theirs. And that's also a hierarchical thing. And that's also a relationship issue. If they think it's theirs, they're gonna jump on the windows, they're gonna bark, they're gonna scratch the floors, they're gonna just, they're gonna do whatever they want. They're gonna pee in the house, right? Good. <clears throat> come, come on. Opposite direction. Fernando, come. Good. Good. Good, look at the eye contact. Good. Okay, we're gonna do that stay now. We're gonna work on that stay. Food. I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat my dog food. Not much interest in the food I see on his part. No, he farms dog. Does he? Okay. Which means this dry kibble is nothing. nothing. No. Again, you know, um, just not listening at all but gets the highest value food, probably the highest value dog beds, toys. Couches. Couches, you know, so not listening, yet highest level of, of resources. That tells him that everything's fine. The way I'm behaving now is completely fine.
Rig, rig. We'll pull this out when rigging comes out. Good. Wait. Fernando, come. Good. Come in. Good. Opposite way, guys. Yep. Good. Break. Yeah. Food's not a motivator, so I'm not going to use that for the stay. The door I'll use. Yeah, he dropped out. Whatever, whatever environmental I can use that makes the dog want to go towards it, any resource I can use. This is also a resource. Okay, the door, the threshold, being able to go through at will, you know, puts him pretty high up on the hierarchy. I'm gonna ask him to, to stay, okay? Just so I can start to get that stay, to stay in there, right? And he understands that we're, I'm asking him to stay away from the resource. We're gonna get started right now. Stay. Good boy. Good. Very oh, beautiful. Good. Beautiful. Break. 